Okay, so in we go. There's uh, some interesting music here. Uh, before we speak to characters, if you come up around the back, there is a chest really well hidden. You, you guys won't be able to see it on YouTube at all. But there is two high potions in it. This area here, you can you cannot enter in Final Fantasy X. Uh, Trommel will be back shortly. Please be patient. These are Lord Seymour's private chambers you may not enter. You can't enter that in this game. In the sequel, you can go up there and there's like a really awkward sex scene thing where you're like giving this woman a massage and she's like groaning and stuff but uh i know you guys will be looking forward to that or <laughs> to deal with that later there's a bunch of faces along the walls here luli's admiring some of them these are the past leaders of the guado they all look the same mr seymour doesn't look like them no don't you know the last leader maester jiskel wed a human woman she was Seymour's mother. Oh. Mm hmm I've told him, guys. I've told him. The last leader. Maester Jiskel. Okay, and they're just reusing that dialogue. Whacker over here. I don't like the smell of this one, eh? Yeah, it's playing that ominous music again. Oh, who else have we got? We've got Oren down here. Stay close to Yuna. I'm sure Oren doesn't care about Stay any of this. He just wants to get on with the pilgrimage. Riku? I wonder what smells so nice. Could be food. Could be food. I just had like the greatest pasties. Kimari not like Mr. Seymour. Uh, <laughs> Kimari just says how it is. Kimari speak no more. Oh no, you only just started speaking. No! Amazing. Hey, Yuna. Why does he want to see me? I don't know, because he's got the hots for you. I think that was quite clear. This way, please. Alright, okay, Trommel. This way, please. I wanted to mention before as well, Trommel's got like garishly weird hands. Try not to look at them too much. They look like like Lego people hands, but they're huge. It's really kind of scary. I will go inform Lord Seymour. Please wait here. Alright, so we get uh, a bunch of people we can chat with. More ominous music. This is one of those weird bits with the HD remake where, I don't know, the food on the table? What's the name of like a texture where no matter where you move the camera, it's always facing the camera? That's what these fruit are here. That's what they are. They, they look kind of crappy. But anyway, so uh, we got Lulu. There's no temple here in Guadalajara, see? Summoners usually just pass through on their way elsewhere. <laughs> what? I didn't even ask a question and you're explaining things. You'd rather I say nothing then? No, no. Maybe you finally believe I don't know anything about Spira. And maybe that means you believe me about Xanarkin too? Well... There are many things I do not know. Your Xanarkand is one of those things. I suppose I can't say what I think either way. Still, be careful. You shouldn't tell other people. Yeah, I know. Do you know why I like Lulu so much? She's so measured. She doesn't know, so she just says, I don't know. You know, I can only speak. She says this so much, and it's just, it's so intelligent of her. There's a lot of people out there, myself included, I've got to be honest, that even if you're not very knowledgeable on something, they just try and prattle something on, just try and say something, you know? Lulu is calm and confident and wise enough to just say, I don't know, I need more information. And that's why I really like her. Why don't you eat something? No shame in it at all. Uh, Riku's tucking in, as you can see here. She's got an apple for the record. You could see a little bit in that cutscene before, but not too much here. Here's Auron. Stay on your guard. Why? This guy's just a priest, right? Those with power use that power. Maesters have power. Wait. You sure you don't have something against Yevon? <laughs> I lived a long time in Xanarkand. Ah. Oh. How's that a response? Hmm. What is taking them so long? He might not have something against Yevon, but he certainly seems to have something against Maesters. Do you remember how he treated Keynock, who apparently they used to be good friends? Here's Wacker. I get the feeling he called us up here for more than just dinner. Yeah, me too. Nothing against the Maester, but I hope we get this over with quick. 
I, I mean, Wacker obviously loves the Maces. Or I don't know. Like he seems to have some reservations, but he's very, he's very Yevon. Kimari speak. No. Kimari still not speaking. Sure. Uh, let me just. Well, I don't sure know how to eat. Okay, Riki. Gee, I wonder what all this is for. It's exciting. Hmm. And now she's looping. There's this really weird kind of pendulum over there in the distance. You can wander around there, but it doesn't do much. The map actually suggests there's stuff behind these doors, but you can't ever go through them. I quite like that subtle hint that there's more going on on the map as well as in-game, because it maintains that illusion there's more to this mansion than you can even explore. And finally, Yuna. What could it be? Oh... Truly, it is good to have guests again. Since Lord Jiskel passed away, these halls have been too quiet. The death of Lord Jiskel was a great loss for all of Spira. Was this Maester Jiskel really such a great guy? He brought the teachings of Yevon to the Guado. He was truly a great man. Truly a loss for us all. He didn't die long ago either, if you remember. But now, a new leader, Lord Seymour, has come before us. Lord Seymour is the child of a guado and a human. He will be the tie that binds our two races together. But that is not all, I think. Lord Seymour... He will surely become the shining star that lights the way for all the peoples of Spira. That is enough, Trommel. Must I always endure such praise? Welcome! You wanted to see me? Please, make yourselves at home. There's no rush. Please keep this short. Yuna must rush. Pardon me. It has been a long time since I had guests. Lady Yuna, this way. I never talked about Riku's spiral eyes, by the way. This sphere is a reconstruction created from the thoughts of the dead that wander the far. Xanarkin? Correct. Xanarkin. As it looked 1,000 years ago. The great and wondrous Machina city, Xanarkand. She once lived in this metropolis. <laughs> she who? Lady Unaleska! She was the first person to defeat Sin and save the world from its ravages. And you have inherited her name. It was my father who named me. Lord Braska was entrusting you with a great task. He wanted you to face Sin as Lady Unaleska did. However, Lady Unaleska did not save the world alone to defeat the undefeatable Sin. It took an unbreakable bond of love, of the kind that binds two hearts for eternity.
We're, we're not supposed to be hearing this, by the way. <laughs> Your face is beet red. You okay? He... He asked me to marry him. You serious? Uh, hey! You know what Yuna must do. Of course. Lady Yuna. No. All summoners are charged with bringing peace to Spira. But this means more than just defeating sin. She must ease the suffering of all Spira. She must be a leader for the people. I proposed to Lady Yuna as a maester of Yevon. Spira is no playhouse. A moment's diversion may amuse an audience, but it changes nothing. Even so, the actors must play their parts. There's no need to answer right away. Please, think it over. We will do so then. We leave. Lady Yuna, I await your favorable reply. Why are you still here, sir? I beg your pardon. We Guado are keen to the scent of the far plane. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, Oren's so badass in that scene, he's just like moving things along. Doesn't care. I mean, you can, you guys can understand why a marriage like that would be, would be kind of amazing, right? The daughter and now summoner of a high summoner who once cute brought a calm, the most recent calm, marrying the, uh, you know, the the maester of the Guado, the the son of the guy that brought the two peoples together. But that would be a big wedding. Uh, so you know, even if Yuna does still want to go off and fight Sin, it's still a, a, probably a, a good move politically, a good move. Well, we'll see the Titus take some issue with that anyway. But yeah, so uh, we learned quite a lot. I think that's one of the only times you ever see, like, Lord Zayon actually in-game. Like, you know, you've got cutscenes and stuff, but, like, you know, seeing him walking around like that. So that's kind of cool. A bit more elaboration on the first people to beat Sin, Unaleska, Lord Zayon. Uh, here's our party. Yuna, the High Summoner's daughter. Seymour, the leader of the Guado. Married in the name of Yevon. Overcoming the barriers of race. It would give Spira something cheery to talk about for a change. Sounds just like a passing daydream, like Oren says. Come on, let's just get on with the pilgrimage. I mean, marriage? Hmm, jealous? <laughs> what? No way. We gotta defeat Sin. Romance can wait. You sure picked a fine time to lay this one on us. Maybe it is a fine time. You serious? If my getting married would help Spira, if it would make people happy, if I could do that for people, maybe I should do what I can. I never imagined doing anything like this, but I won't answer till I know what's right. Seriously? You could always just quit your pilgrimage and get married. <laughs> I will go on. I'm sure that Lord Seymour will understand. Um, I guess so. I am a summoner. I must fight and defeat Sin. Like Braska before you. 
I had to stop myself from shouting. What's there to think about? I'm going to the far plane. I'm going to see my father and think on this. Go on. We'll be right behind you. Mm. I wondered why none of the others ever asked Yuna. Do you love Seymour? Do you even like him? I like this plot. I really do. It's it's one of those things, you know? Because uh, I feel like a lot of the time, especially in worlds like this, when it comes to something like marriage, how often is it marriage for love? I know you get all the fairy stories and stuff, but seriously, like, a lot of the time, if you're in a desperate world, in a desperate position, in poverty, for example, marriage was more than about love. It was about security and, you know, to an extent, I guess, legacy, you know, having children and stuff, carrying on the family name. That's what marriage was. It, it, love sort of came second to many of those things. And this is, you know, th that conflict between it. And Kylus is clearly jealous. Come on, he's clearly jealous. Anyway, we'll move up here. It uh, said the far plane in blue there, de uh, showing that that's our next location we're going to visit. Um, this guy says, remember, the far plane is sacrosanct. Proper conduct, please. Sure. Uh, we can't enter the mansion again now. Uh, so we'll head on up. Um, it says it in blue as if it's like a completely new area. Like maybe we'd have to go through random encounters and stuff to get there. But actually, it's just a join to Guado Salam. Again, it makes me wonder, was this originally going to be a bit further away? You know, a complete branch. Anyway, really well hidden chest here with eight lightning marbles. Those are fantastic items. Do lots of damage when thrown in battle. Uh, I believe you can use them to teach Aeons tier 2 um, thunder. In fact, let's have a quick look here. Let's put some uh, money where my mouth is. Actually, Ixion already knows it, so let's try it with uh, Valifor. Let's have a look here. So, Thunder. There you go, Thundara. Uh, two lightning marbles will teach her Thundara. Uh, two of those bomb cores, again, that they tried to get us to do in the overdrive, um, would teach it Fira. So, you know, there's cool stuff here. I guess that's lightning proof at the same time. This crazy looking screen here, this is the entrance to the far plane. Think of the far plane, almost, yes, it's where all the fireflies gather, but almost think of it like the underworld of this universe. Even though clearly we're not underground right now, we're like, this is some kind of weird. Guado constructed portal thing. Um, the idea of it being in the underworld is uh, elaborated more on in the sequel, to be honest. But yeah, so let's go have a chat. Question about this far plane. When somebody dies, a summoner sends them to the far plane, right? So their souls, or whatever they are, uh, they go to the far plane, right? But that's the far plane we're going to, right? And Yuna's old man's there too? Do dead people live there or something? Hmm. So Titus is so in the dark right now. What you're seeing here that he's imagining, they're actually enemies later in the game, way later. You thinking those funny thoughts again, yeah? <laughs> You'll see once we get there. And they just leave him in the dark. Anyway, the far plane. I love this bit of the story. I'm not going to be talking much. I want you guys to get into the mood of it. Aren't you coming? I do not belong there. <laughs> You're scared. Searching the past to find the future. This is all that is there. I need it not. You'd better be going. You're not really going to see the dead. More like your memories of them. People think of their relatives and the pyreflies react to them. They take on the form of the dead person. An illusion, nothing else. Hmm. Well, have fun. What? You're not going either, Riku? I keep my memories inside. Huh? Memories are nice, but that's all they are. I've always sort of wondered what Riku would see if she went to the far plane. See you later. 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 You're I'm gonna, I, I was going to open a video saying, uh, Rise the shoe puff. Uh, what's Oren say? You're still here. Oh, he just waves us off. All right, well, curiosity is going to get the better of me. Let's go into this scary looking thing. I love the effect on it there where he taps it. That's pretty cool. They do a cool blend here of in-game stuff 
with CGI. What the? Or pre-rendered, I should say. The far plane was cool, but I couldn't stop thinking about Yuna. Her parents, they looked so happy together. But it got me worried that maybe seeing them would make Yuna really consider Seymour's proposal. Because they're so happily married. Now, Kimari is going to be a bit of a gatekeeper here. Doesn't want us to leave. I don't know why he doesn't want us to leave. Obviously, gameplay mechanics, but... uh. But yeah, so we've got uh, two options right now. We can speak to Lulu, well, three, Lulu, Waka, or Yuna. I'm going to go with Waka first. Yo, Chapu, meant to come see you earlier, yeah? Sorry, I know you won't hold it against me. Eh, I gave up that game. I'm a guardian from here on, you know? This guy looks a lot like you. Showed up. Traveling with him, I thought maybe... You were still alive somewhere, yeah? But then again, here you are on the far plane. Guess your place is here. So, how you been? Oh, that guy I just told you about. I gave him your sword. He likes it. Huh? Wow. So that's Chapu. He doesn't really look like us. Man, can you imagine if this was in the real world? Can you imagine? It, it'd be nuts. Just a sec more. Like, I, I love everything about this. Just the fact that, like, this is the first time Waka's seen his brother in, what, two years? Uh, and, you know, just he, he's sort of putting up this bit of bravado as if he doesn't care that much. I don't know. I, I think it's so real. Anyway, this was a, a great opportunity. Game doesn't tell you anything, but as soon as that happens, as he mentions the brotherhood right here at this moment... Uh, it upgrades your brotherhood. So instead of having just strength plus 5% and a bunch of empty slots, it now has a, a, a further 10% water strike and sensor on it. It fills up all the empty slots. Brotherhood, you can't actually customize those empty slots. So uh, yeah, we may as well re-equip the brotherhood. I like it because it's an incentive to re-equip that weapon, you know, that you may have left behind. Uh, but yeah, so that's Chapu, guys. Uh, who we haven't heard much about in the story, in, uh, recently anyway. What's Lulu thinking of? He is dead, and I am still alive. Coming here really makes that clear. I should focus more on what I have to do now. <laughs> what? what I'm not even sure what I'm saying. Don't you mean that you should leave Chapu behind? I'm sure he was a great guy, but don't be others. Hmm, that's a possibility. Hmm, how about mm, Waka? What, me? With Waka? Yeah, you two get along great. Getting along isn't enough. Not even close. Oh, sorry. My mistake. You'd do well to remember that. Knowing a bit about women might come in handy someday. Yeah, I'll remember. I won't be forgetting either. Goodbye, Chapu. You always said I looked grumpy. But those were the happiest days of my life. Oh, seriously? That was her husband to be, man. Wow. Why don't you try calling someone? All you have to do is think about them. I mean, that's quite intimidating thought, right? Wait, why aren't you calling anyone, by the way? Kind of interesting. So, yeah, uh, that's kind of the thing with Chapu. Let's go see Yuna. So, uh, Yuna? I've decided. Uh, oh. Really? Uh, that's good. I remember when I was only seven years old in Bavel that day. My father had defeated Sin, and the whole town was out in the streets. Everyone was laughing. They all seemed so happy. 
If I defeated Sin, that would make everyone happy, wouldn't it? That... I must do what everyone wants, not just what I want. Let's go back. You gotta tell Seymour. Before that, call Sir Jet. Give it a try. Huh? Don't worry. He won't come. Trying not to think about my old man made me think about him, of course. See, told you. He isn't here because he's not dead. He's sin. <laughs> that means he's alive, you know. What if my old man really is Sin? What would I say to Yuna? Heck, uh, to everybody in Spira. Wait, why should I have to apologize for him anyway? I'd rather never see him again. What makes you hate him so? Everything he does just makes me mad. It was his fault that me and my mother... Uh... uh... Mom? It's her. She's very pretty. But... Wait. No one ever performed the sending for her. She must have accepted death while she was still alive. Whoa there. That's my mother you're talking about. Oh, I'm sorry. Hmm. It's okay. Ah, uh, I think I just figured something out. What? Why I hate my old man. See, so, so I, told I told him what, what I, thought I thought of him, of him right, right there. there. What, really? Of course. <laughs> I suppose, but... Mommy! Just, Just a, sec, a sec, dear. Whenever my old man was around, my mother wouldn't even look at me. Maybe that's when I started to resent him, even hate him. When he left us, Mom just lost her energy. Is she, she all right? right? Why, Why should you care? If she, if she dies, dies, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know, know what to do. do. Don't, Don't say, say mom is gonna die. I apologize. The old lady next door told me, when a lovebird dies, the one left behind, it just gives up living so it can join its mate. It was just like that. I hated my old man even more. But really, my old man... Mommy! Just, just a sec, dear. dear. Ah, uh, go to him. He'll cry if you don't. Oh, man. Hmm? I must sound so stupid. I don't think so. How embarrassing. Well, need some more time. No. I'm ready. Did I... Miss something? <laughs> Thanks for waiting. I'll go give my answer to Maester Seymour. Oh. <gasps> Lord Jiskel. Oh, Lord Jiskel. He does not belong here. Why? Yuna, send him. Wow, so someone's coming out of the far plane. That's pretty ridiculous. Lord Jiskel. He is Lord Jiskel no more. Send him now. Remember, if someone lingers too long, they become a fiend? Unlike what they ever were before? Why? And he dropped something. Talk later. We leave now. I love that whole thing with Jekt, by the way, because it's so easy to just buy the story as 
oh, hey, he was a drunk, he was, you know, an asshole, he, he wasn't a good father, you know, he never supported Titus, blah, blah, blah. It's easy to buy that canned story, and this is why he hates his father. But actually, the truth, you know, as, as Titus kind of realises there, is maybe the fault's a bit more on his mother. Or is it her fault for loving Jekt so much that she ended up neglecting her child a bit more? And, you know, it's just sad all around, and, and that, I really like that. I like that we get a bit more deep into these characters. And that we see, I think that's the first time you ever see Braska, like, in the flesh-ish, you know, because he's up there in the far plane. Uh, it's just great, I love it. Alright, so anyway, we're walking back. You get kind of an interesting part of the story here, where t you get the option to say one thing or another as Titus. So here we go. Uh, what was that just now? That really Lord Disco? Uh, you can just listen, or say, wait, I know. I don't understand how a man like Lord... And because I didn't respond quick enough, it, it, it rolls on, you know, it's kind of like playing The Walking Dead, where you get a certain amount of time and you have to make a choice, or otherwise it's gone. I like that a lot. Lord Jiskel can die and not be sent. I would think that he was sent once, but he stayed on Spira. Something, a powerful emotion, could have bound him to this world. Such things happen. That's against the rules, isn't it? It means he died an unclean death. Okay, so a bit more elaboration on the death thing. If you died an unclean death, you, you something is pulling you back to this world. Um, so what happens now if we get... Now, there's some extra stuff at the far plane, okay? But you have to do it at specific time-sensitive moments of the plot. So I'm going to just check right now and see if we're missing anything. I don't think we are, but we'll have a check. Um, speaking of time sensitive, I forgot to mention two things back over at the Moonflow. Number one, once you've ridden that shoe puff, you know how after we finished the Jose and we got Ixion, I said everything was open again, you could go all the way back to Poseid. Well, the second you ride the shoe puff, now it's closed off again because you can't take the shoe puff back. So, you got to be careful of that kind of stuff. So here, look, nobody's here. We get a totally different view now, though, and it's like CGI backgrounds and stuff. Ah, oh, it's awesome. Anyway, there's this guy over here. Who says, our son was killed in Operation Meehan. We begged him not to go, but... And this guy, thanks to the summon ascending the fallen ones on the far plane, we were able to reunite with our son who was killed in battle. Words cannot express how grateful we are. So think about when the Guado was still secluded and not really open to Yevon or whatever. I wonder what their religion was. Like, they clearly knew about the power of this place, the far plane. If you look way off in the distance, it looks like there's a cave down there. That's kind of crazy. Uh, you don't need to explore the far plane much in this game. You're doing the sequel. So anyway, we're done there. Uh, there will be another little trip we'll do later, but yeah. So anyway, that's number one thing. We can't return again. Number two was there was another goalkeeper, a guado. A woman sitting near one of the shoe puff signs on the north bank. Uh, and she's a better catcher than Kayo is. And even, I believe, better than uh, Jamal, who we currently have in goal. But uh, I, I can't really be bothered to change that. So anyway, that's some things. Some other things I wanted to talk about just before we do a bunch more story. Uh, and that would be, you know how we got Lulu, um, the, uh, Fatal Kate Sith, right? Now this thing, uh, is kind of a big risk on her, because she doesn't have much accuracy, alright? So, yeah, she can physically attack flans with it, because they don't have any evasion. But she could have just cast magic on those flans. Yeah, she can attack some big creatures like Ochus with it, fine. But what about, like, dingoes and birds and lizards and, you know, a, a, a lot of the enemies in the game? Well, she can't, because she doesn't have the accuracy. Now, here's a really cool synergy you can do while playing Final Fantasy X. Uh, her sphere grid line is very close to Whacker's. In fact, I just talked to you guys about the fact there's a lock on her path, really close to Drain, and then a bunch of Whacker stuff. So here's a crazy thing you can do. You can get Whacker the TK TKO, you can get Lulu the Fatal Kate Sith, and you can have Lulu on Whacker's path instead of her own. Maybe have Kamare following up as a black mage to ma ma make up for that deficit. And then what you've got is you've got two characters who can sort of inflict instant death on a lot of enemies just by having them on your front line. If Lulu's gone down that line, then the Fatal Kate Sith can jump up and hit all the birds and hit all the lizards and everything, right? It's just the accuracy she wants. Uh, so, you know, that's her, and obviously Wacker gets a bit of speed on there too. So that, that's actually a really viable way of playing the game, kind of an interesting way, until you hit enemies that are immune to death and so forth, which takes a long time. We're still kind of early-ish, right? So, uh, that takes a long time, and yeah, that's kind of something you can do. Anyway, back out in uh, Guado Salam here. If we walk a little bit further down towards the mansion, see everyone's hanging out. I will go meet with Maester Seymour. Yuna, Jisco is the Guado's problem, not yours. Yeah, she clearly found something. Um... 
What? So, Lulu, what do you think about Yuna getting married? As long as the pilgrimage continues, either way's fine. That's it? What if she doesn't even like the guy? Is that okay? People marry for many reasons. What's that mean? Sometimes marriage doesn't require love, you know? Defeat sin and bring joy to the people of Spira. Get married and bring joy to the people of Spira. For Yuna, they're just two ways down the same road. All you need is determination. If you have that, you don't need love. I don't know. Mm, I just don't get it. Now that scene we just had there with Lulu, that is the affection scene, okay? Depending on who likes you more, you will get a different scene as all the characters split up and walk around Guado Salam. Different scene. So, uh, it will either be Lulu or it will be Riku. Now, once you've had Lulu walk with you, there's a couple of additional scenes you can have with her by following her and having another little chat. So there's another one here. Listen, if Yuna gets married, then I... What? That again? Yes. If she is to marry, I would want her to marry for love. See? But, if Yuna said she wanted to marry the one she loves, I would have to object. Huh? Uh, you're not making much sense. I know. It's a complicated issue. And once again, this is the cool one. Lulu? I've talked enough about that. What? I'm sorry, just forget about it. Jeez, Grumpy. You'll understand one of these days. I just don't want to give it words, not yet. I shouldn't have to say this, but don't fall in love with her. <gasps> so, right, now you get to make a choice. A bit like way back when we first met Lulu and Wacker was talking to us outside the camp in Besaid. Uh, if you say too late, I'm already in love with her, raises Yuna's uh, love for your affection mechanic, right? Okay is neutral, or you can say you're more my type, Lulu. Now remember, you only get this scene and this sequence of events if Lulu is already at your max affection. So the game is sort of assuming here that you've already got maybe a bit of a thing first. So, uh, I mean... 99.99% of all players who ever play Final Fantasy X will have this scene with Lulu because the only optional one is with Riku who how are we gonna let me just explain this how are we ever gonna have the Riku scene right since Riku joined our party we've had a grand total of what two random encounters how are, how do uh, affections raise by speaking to people first by getting options like this and saying you like them all neither of which are available for Riku at all until this point we haven't had a single battle since we joined Guado Slam. The only other way to make Riku like you is if you had a ton of battles and you constantly had Tidus specifically, like throwing potions at Riku to heal her up. It's the only way you'd get it. So you're going to get this one with Lulu. Um, but, you know, let's, let's go crazy. Let's say you're more my type, Lulu. Interesting. I suppose I could add you to my list. I wish you good luck, little boy. You're going to need it. <laughs> I love how he fist bumps the air. All right, so we're going to have a bit of a cut here. Um, and I'm going to cut in some footage of me getting the Riku one. Now, what I did, instead of healing Riku constantly, I actually left Guado Salam and I beat the snot out of Lulu. Every I left one enemy on the field every single turn. I had Tidus attack Lulu I just kept having him hit her and by doing that it kept dropping her affection eventually it dropped it so low that Riku's default Affection for me was higher than Lulu's now was because hers was basically at zero and I got the all in it scene So enjoy those guys. It's kind of a similar setup. I'll see you in a second. I will go meet with Maester Seymour Yuna Jisco is the Guado's problem, not yours. Wait up, I'll go with you. Yuni's not getting married, is she? Seems that way. It's your big chance, huh? Oh, uh, honest? <laughs> Ouch! See ya!
Shobakusacho! Say, you ever think about getting married? Me? No, never. I think about it a lot. Aren't you a little young? Some people marry really young in spirit, you know. You mean people our age get married? Yeah. Fiends are around, and there's always sin, right? One of them might get you, you know? Lots of people marry the first person they fall in love with, just like that. Really? I'll probably be the same way. You an only child? Yeah. I got an older brother myself. Huh. I wish I had some younger brothers and sisters, though. So I'll ask your parents. Mom died. A machina went on a rampage. I'm sorry. When I get married, I'm gonna have lots of kids. That way they'll all have brothers and sisters. What? You're really thinking about your future, aren't you? That's great. It's pretty normal, I think. Hey, maybe Yuna's back. One thing I will splice into the commentary just here at the end, because I never had a chance to before, what she said there about her mother dying to a rampaging machina, I'm pretty certain that, like, this key part of her life, this big bit of her backstory, is only ever explained to you in this one obscure, weird-to-find scene. So, yeah, uh, her father's still alive, she's got an older brother, and her mother died to a rampaging machina. That's uh, sort of all we can say for now, but her family is sort of a big part of the plot. It's actually related to how she became a guardian. But yeah, so uh, we'll cut back into the original commentary now. Woo! Okay, we're back! Alright, so... Uh, if you tell Riku, so there's a lot of scenes here by the way, there's Lulu likes you, Riku likes you, and then for either of them there's obviously three branches either way. So I chose, oh I like you Riku, um, and what she actually says to you in our bed there, is she says something like, um, maybe someday is what she says. So when she turns around and goes all cute and says in our bed, she's saying maybe someday, maybe we can get together some kind someday. And I think that's really cute. I also like all the stories, stories about like marriage and stuff. I don't know whether she's going to say that to us when Lulu liked us. When we leave here, we have to go through the Thunder Plains next, you know? So I guess not. But yeah, you get some cool insights into Spira, right? And the way people marry early and... Stuff like that. Her age is actually meant to be like 15 or something as far as the game's concerned. And everyone's always like, oh, if you say you like Riku in Final Fantasy X, then you're obviously a complete pedo. I always find it kind of weird because they easily could have... I mean, it's just a number, right? She's a CGI rendered character in a video game, and it's just a number. Her age 17 is never mentioned, right? Oh, or 15 or whatever. It's never mentioned. So what if they just said, oh, she's 21, but she looked exactly the same? Would all those people be coming out with the same accusations? I don't know. It's one of those weird things, you know, that I always find kind of curious. Anyway, so uh, that's that. Um, you'll find that everyone's split out around Guado Salam right now. Speaking of perfection mechanics, if you try and enter the shop, Kamari will bust out. Guado potions, good. Buy some before leaving. Um, and just because of that, that's given us plus six affection to Kamari. Now, obviously, it's not just the women that get affection, everyone does. And there'll be other areas of the game later where higher affection on Kamari changes stuff. So that gives you plus six. I guess the idea is you're meant to have bought the potions. So, which is what raises his affection. So I'll buy just a couple. Here we go. So there you go, Kamari. I listened to your advice. And now you can like me more. So yeah, you'll find Kamari there. Uh, and you will also find Waka and Oron just outside the mansion. So we'll go have a, a cheeky little chat with them. Hey, Oron. We leave as soon as Yuna returns. I trust you'll be ready. She's in there alone. Is this really a good idea? For a while there, I was a little worried about what was going to happen, yeah? No one seems particularly overjoyed by the marriage. Guado. Okay, and he's saying that again. I'm a little worried about Lord Jiskal. I wonder mm -hmm. if Maester Seymour has heard. The Jiskal broke out of the far plane and dropped something that we the players saw but no one else. So yeah, we cannot enter the mansion. Now what we do to progress the story here is we just try and head into the next area of the game, which is the Thunder Plains. My, was the Lady Summoner not with you? No, she's at Seymour's place. That's Maester Seymour, or Lord Seymour. Oh, I'll be careful. Sorry. 
That's all right. Oh, Mr. Seymour left Guado Salam a short while ago. You serious? I believe he went to the temple in Makalania. Maester Seymour is also the high priest of that temple. Whoa! I gotta tell the others! <gasps> so he's not even here! Amazing. So, uh, Shalinda's here, I guess. I too will go to the temple in Makalania shortly. Alright, so she'll say that and go back into the shop. Hey guys! And now we're explaining things, I guess, and they mute it out. What's the name of that? Where you, as a writer, decide to cut scenes where characters are explaining things to one another that you, the audience, already knows. Lord Jisco, please tell me. What can I do to help? Yuna, let's go! Yeah, so she went in, saw Seymour wasn't there, clearly, but she's been staying inside to look at Jiskel's picture. Oren's right, Yuna. Jiskel is the Guado's problem, not yours. Stay on track. They say Seymour went to Makarena Temple. Makalania Temple. <laughs> I? What I don't get is, uh? how would the Lord Maester head off without a peep to anyone? I'm sorry. That's one of those stupid bits. Macarena, I. Oh god, it's just so bad. One. Maybe he wasn't expecting Yuna's answer so soon. Ah, that's probably it. <laughs> Yuna, what is it? Oh, nothing. Hmm. You're a poor liar. It's true. It's nothing. Come on, let's go. So the plot has thickened considerably. Uh, Lord Seymour awaits at Macalania Temple. Please make haste. Can't enter the mansion ever again. If you missed that chest in there, then good luck. But it was only two high potions anyway. We're actually done at Guado Salam now, sort of. So what I'm going to do is head out into the next area, known as the Thunder Plains. Whichever cutscene, and we're actually going to come back. Oh, Besaid, I see you there on the map. We've come so far. We've come so far. Oh no, we're here. How are we supposed to cross that? See the lightning rod towers? The lightning is drawn to them, hopefully. We head north, not too near and not too far from the towers, yeah? Meaning we should avoid wide open areas. I think I forgot something in Guado Salam. Nice knowing you. <laughs> okay, okay, I'll go. Ah, oh, he just doesn't care. Uh, so moving across the Thunder Plains, lightning can strike Titus on the Gandalf Thunder Plains. Lightning can strike at any time, so keep moving. The lightning rod towers absorb nearby lightning, seek shelter under them. As Tidus is doing, I'm actually not controlling this right now, it's just tutorial. When there are no towers nearby, you can dodge lightning by pressing X. Hit X as soon as you see lightning flash. If successful, you can dodge the thunderbolt like that. Constantly mashing X, however, can be dangerous. And then the tutorial walks you all the way back, and there you go. Good luck on your journey, and also consider there are random encounters constantly. That's the Thunder Plains, that is not for this video though. Got b great music in there, I love that place. Gandalf Thunder Plains, you may remember. Hi Summoner Gandalf. I talked a little bit about releasing fiends in a previous episode, uh, which we'll get to. Anyway, so if you return to Guado Salam at that very moment, again, why would you want to? But uh, you'll actually get a bit more character development for Lulu. So anyway, we're back up on the thunder uh, on the uh, far plane. Over here's a guy. Been a while, sis. It's been seven years, but you still look the same. Jeez, I'm older than you now. Oh, I guess it makes sense. Hey, I... I brought you something. Check this out. Huh? Uh, there we are. See? She looks just like you. Her name's Yuna. Boy, was I surprised first time I saw her. Uh, of course she's not as good as you. If you were still alive, I bet you'd fight just like her. It's okay. Yuna will beat Sin for you. I know it. So, don't you worry. Okay, sis. See ya. 
Who is that guy, you might wonder? Why does this random NPC have voice acting? Cannot we speak? You get a brief moment to try and speak to him, but then he just runs off. Uh, I believe he's actually a character we meet later, but because there's no nameplate, there is no way to confirm it. But the fact that they voice him, the fact he has the same voice and the same character mo uh, model as someone else from later on in the story, uh, I'm going to go out and say it right now. I think that's Awaka's brother, but uh, we'll get to that. There's a chest over here. Um... This thing has got the Venus Crest in it. Remember, we've been collecting crests as we've been going through our, our journey. Venus Crest is actually for Lulu. And what do you know? Lulu's here. Earlier in the far plane, Lulu, she, she didn't have... She hadn't conjured anyone, had she? No one there. She's not appearing. Who is it? None of your business. Sorry. <sighs> no, it's not your fault. Why aren't you here? What is this? I need to be alone right now. I need... Um, so there you go. Uh, quick, cool little scene there. Again, that's a massive boost to Lulu's affection, by the way, seeing that. <laughs> massive boost. Actually, completely missable scene in the game. If you go far enough in the game, that won't be available anymore. So you have to come back to see that. So uh, something significant going on with Lulu that she's still not told us about. Anyway, so there you go, guys. My feet are killing me. Well, they're not killing me. The standing desk? I don't know. It's pretty good, guys. I'm still recommending it to people. My feet don't hurt so much as they did before at all. And considering I've been stood for at least five to six hours today using this thing, it's pretty awesome. So uh, there you go, guys. That's the story of Guado Salam so far. Um, the plot has thickened considerably now. Uh, and, um, yeah, we sort of move into another branch of, of Final Fantasy X in my eyes. But thank you very much for watching. I'm still overwhelmed by the support this series has got. Thank you so much. Hopefully it continues, and I guess I will see you next time for some cool stuff in the Gandalf Thunder Plains, where there's plenty more to talk about. Hope you guys have a great evening. I'll see you next time.